Um, well, over to you, Billy. I'll let you. Uh, right. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can make this work. There we go. Right. Um, so I. If I, oh, if I can get this to work, which is the other thing. Um, nope. We can see it. And so, oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Well, I can see it. I, I just can't. I just can't change them. Um, if you press res resume slideshow on that box. And oh, there we go. Yeah. Click now. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is this is this is. The, to, to paraphrase the uh, the basic principles that um, they go on, that your your what the competitors can expect the racing to be safe. Well, um, yeah, in, in in as far as you can you can do that. Fun, yes. You you, you want to provide um, courses that the competitors actually want to do. You you want to provide racing that they want to go and do. So. Um, It, it is again listening to the competitors and and and, and providing what what it is they want, what it is they expect, and also what it is from within the notice of race, because that is effectively your the contract between the race organisers and the competitors is is in the notice of race, and you should provide the racing that they are expecting within that. And similarly, that goes on to being fair that you should be consistent and also um, as, 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 as fair to all competitors as possible. So if you get, generally, if you get asked a question um, by a boat sailing past the committee boat, it's usually better to answer over the VHF so that everyone can hear it rather than just uh, speak to them individually, even if it is an, an innocuous question, it is easier, it's better to make sure that everyone has heard um, what you're thinking, what you're planning, um, rather than just that one person, just that one boat, rather. Just to run through a few of the changes in, in this one, the current uh, the, the current version of the Racing Rules of Sailing, which is probably backwards on the, I don't know anyway um, the, the, the ones that change the um, the way racing is run um, orange flag is now uh, one end of the start line and blue flag is one end of the finish line so it should be for competitors if they see an orange flag they expect it to be one end of the start line and especially true on, on a committee boat um, and similarly for the finish. So I think that's going to be the case this, um, for, with, with Galadriel now. Uh, um, and then if you're finishing on the fixed line, you won't then be showing the blue flag because you're not part of the finish line. You're just um, there observing the boats crossing uh, the finish line. and maybe of assistance to the competitors, although I'm sure they know what's going on. Um, the hull is now what constitutes um, a boat crossing a start or a finish line. It is the hull itself. It isn't the, um, the crew or the or a sail in its normal position or a piece of equipment in its normal position. It is the hull. And um, as far as the victory class goes, it probably makes very little difference. Um, spinnakers and crew may have made a slight difference, but it's not going to make much odds. And also, you can now, as a race officer, score someone NSC if you see them not sailing the course. If you see them crossing the start line, sailing around, and crossing the finishing line, but not going around all the boys, you can now score them NSC when before you couldn't. Um, a fairly minor change, and the boat still then has the the uh, ability to request redress for that. But it is now something that can be done, 
whereas before it may have been done but it shouldn't have been done so that that's the one on that one so are people okay with this is this bill, bill can i just ask about that does it mean it's automatic if the OOD sees that um, it's not sell the course it doesn't have to have any form of hearing or any no. explanation no no but they can request redress the boat can then re request redress and it's then a um, thing of evidence but I think it's one of those things that a race officer is unlikely to do it unless they are sure about it it's not I don't think it's one that you should be doing unless you are sure about it and it does make life or it can make life simpler possibly mm. but it, it, it is now it, it's now an option within uh, within the current within the new uh, rules Thank you. right um, I, and I think I think they're the main changes there aren't too many other 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 changes to the uh, rules there um, there are lots of sources of mm -hmm information on, 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 on how to run races. There is the RIA's own uh, um, uh, race management guide, which uh, you, can, you can download from their website. It is, it is quite an extensive, oh, you want to say 81 pages. It's quite an extensive document and we'll go through all the, all the standard RIA methods of doing it it tends to be more um i think generally more on the um side of dinghy racing and um specifically we're doing um a trapezoidal course which tends to be the standard for uh a lot of the sort of dinghy class open meetings that I've generally followed the boats around um, as a judge and things, but it, but it does also include all the other things. And actually most of the slides from the, uh, from the, the, the club race officer course are included in, in that. Uh, so that is a good, um, source of information if you need anything more in more depth. Um, on, on the World Sailing site, you can get the current racing rules of sailing and a lot more technical stuff on other things. And very often I find US Sailing or Sail Canada has got some interesting different views on things. Um, less so Australian and New Zealand, but there are sources of information. The Sailing Cruising and Racing Association, the SCRA, um, they have all the mark um, designations if you have to use them, but you probably don't. And QHM for the bylaws, which um, I'm sure are generally uh, can, the ones that are relevant will be contained within the sailing instructions and the um, and the notice of race. Personal equipment. Um, I'm in general. Um, the. Am I right that now, now for Galadriel, you'll have to bring your your life jacket with you? Is that uh, right, or will there be? Yes, it will be. Yeah. So, um, so I have my bag of personal kit that I've gone and stuck there. So, ugh. life jacket, the VHF radio, notepad, um, and a few other things. It's uh, Um, a um, an, an, an old cassette 
uh, which I find is the easiest way of carrying spare bits of um, cassette tape for making the uh, bits and pieces. Um, the um, the stick with the uh, string on the end of it. Um, Wind indicator. Wind indicator, yeah, yeah. The 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 um the, the the woolly stick, which is the which is I still think the most useful thing you've got um, on there. And um, hand bearing compass. And I tend to like to bring um, a GPS, mostly for the clock, on this, which is always the question of um, whether you whether you want to go with a uh, um, a clock or uh, or a countdown timer. I generally prefer the clock uh, because um, you can always work work backwards, but timers have the habit of stopping on you uh, one way and another, and um, and then muck up your timing sequences. But, um, and the other main bits, the binoculars and the hand bearing compass are what I like to have, have with me. Um, as well as uh, lots of, um, lots of cable ties, lots of cable ties. You can have too many cable ties. Are there any other bits of personal kit that people generally want to bring with them for? Uh... No. Okay. Recording kit. Yeah, yeah, recording. Yeah, I haven't got that with me. Um, I do, uh, and and that is definitely the way things are going for um, both voice and video recording of starts and finishes is, is 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 definitely the way things are going now and um i have people who swear by just having an, an ipad to record starts and finishes and 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 use them for reviewing things i suspect with the victory class the number of people you've got on the committee boat or um generally makes it more difficult um, during a start sequence to actually manage to uh, video things. But certainly I mean, a voice recorder, yeah, is very handy. And we'll, I'll usually have one with me. I haven't got it in this bag uh, because this is in fact more my, um, more my um, umpiring bag, which is why I've got a couple of whistles, which is always, which is another handy thing to have uh, if you're if your sound signaling apparatus fails, you can always blow a whistle. Right. Can I chip in on that one, Billy? Of course, as, that is as far a as good idea. As far as recording is concerned, just about everybody's got one on their mobile phone. So if they yep. learn how to use it, it's there. Absolutely, absolutely. I, um, if you have got a decent um, microphone with a little fluffy cover so much the better it doesn't matter what you're then recording into it can be a mobile phone it could be another recorder it it really um makes makes a tremendous difference as well but they're not everyone yeah I so say feel please feel free to chip in and either either get me uh to speed up or slow down um and we'll try and we'll try and get through things yeah um so that in in terms of preparation, I think this list is not is not um, is is not necessarily complete. Uh, so before you before you go out there, yeah, you want to check you've got all your your personal kit. You want to check and you know what what the tides are doing and what the weather is doing. Um, I there are there are now so many sources of weather. Um, tides, 
available in all sorts of places. I tend to use the Admiralty um, Easy Tide uh, whilst remembering to add the hour when um, <laughs> at, 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 at most of the year add the hour uh, and but certainly tidal information and weather information readily available again you've probably got it with you on your phone um, and will be there handy beforehand and check you've got your personal kit with you um, uh, VHF charged up especially is the other thing having a discharge VHF is always a, um, a good one and um, then when you get on board check the uh, check check the onboard kit check the um, uh, flags you need the things for riding up the course and so on we got um, are there any other things for for preparation beforehand that you would normally check the uh, the SIs is, is always a handy one as, as, as I know to my cost, um, not reading the SIs uh, is, is always a, um, a thing, especially if, if, you, if you're not as familiar as perhaps you should be with it. Right, anyway. So yeah, weather forecast, plenty of places. Um, I tend to like Windicator. Um, which um, provides the most of the fixed uh, of the fixed uh, weather stations around certainly the south coast and uh, often you can see things coming in from the west uh, things that are happening down at Limington um, before they get certainly to the central Solent but and again, Bramble Met will, 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 will show you things going this way. It's a pity that the uh, sort of um, America's Cup ones, the, the America's Cup one that was on the fort was particularly good when it was working. But um, anyway, there, there are, you've got plenty of sources of, uh, of, of uh, Met information out there. It's not a, that is not gonna be a problem. Right. This is this I found an interesting um, slide from the from the RIA because it shows um, all the jobs that probably the two, maybe even one, three people on board that committee boat are going to be doing. Um, the PRO is the principal race officer. That is term used by the RAA for when you have multiple race courses they are the one in charge of all the race courses the RO is the one in charge of that race course the deputy race officer is the oh golly I've got to remember my terminology here they are the one that can take over from the race officer they are um, standing by them on the main committee boat the ARO is generally the uh, one doing the line from the pin end so they if you, if you have a rib as the pin end, they are the one in that rib looking down the other end of the line. Visual signals, um, which, which are normally flags and normally known as flags. So I don't know quite why they're visual signals, whereas the gunner is usually not a gunner these days, but is um, blowing a hooter. So uh, I don't know why they've got them that way around. And yes, the timekeeper and recorders, pin end boat crew, finish boat crew, Mark Lairs, Beach Master, Safety Officer, you, the, you, you're going to be doing all of those as um, the two or three people on the, on the committee boat. You're going to be recording, you're going to be uh, looking at the line, you're going to be recording the finishes. If you are laying a mark or two, you're going to be laying the marks and you're going to be the Beach Master and Safety Officer because you are also going to be checking that um, all, all the boats that turn up you've um, accounted for them when they go back in. So it is all, all the jobs in one. And this again is the um, 
the terminology that's used in, in the rules, um, displayed and removed. Uh, and again, the particular terminology that is used in the books, but I think I'll skip over that. Right, now this is, again, from an old version, but it, it shows the principle of how the flags are displayed, whether it's furthest forward, whether it's the most, um, the portmost. In general, the recall flags are shown there. Usually you'll have the um, uh, X-ray the individual recall on a stick because um, you're required to show it promptly and promptly is taken to be, I believe within five seconds, within four or five seconds. So. And you should be able to do it pretty much um, immediately. You should know that as the start gun goes. You should know, you should be able to tell if there are at least some boats over. Um, the, the general recall, again, is good to have on, on a halyard at that end where the fleet that's crossed the line can most see it. The, Postponement and abandonment flags you probably do on at the other end because it will be that end that boats are looking at when they're hanging around the committee boat. Then the class flag and the preparatory um, flags. In general, the I, in our case, the Z is the class flag and the black flag. And it would also be U flag there now, which is used an, an awful lot everywhere else as the prep flag. And then the other flags to be used as for communication with the fleets, the shortened course, the uh, Lima flag, follow me, and the Yankee flag for life jackets. The blue flag now is really um, swapped with the orange when you're doing finishes or for some uh, boats, it will be on a separate mast whilst part of the race crew are doing finishes from that flag um, line while you're doing starts from another line. It can be, so that is the general understanding of the way things go. So in general, as long as the flags don't overlap each other is the other thing to check once you've hoisted them um, to make sure that they can be viewed as far as possible from behind the boat, that is going to be the main thing. Yeah, I was and I'm going to comment on that, Billy, that my thought process, regardless of particular colors, is, is if you're limited to space, to always try and separate yeah. the flags so that when, when one breaks or one goes up, it, it's clearly separated from the others. And it yep. all that, that, much that is definitely that is definitely the main thing to so that you can so that you can see the two flags um in that case you will you will not be having a um uh an, an ap or a or an n flag um showing uh, you may have a yankee flag um flying um but you won't have the recall flags either so yes to separate them as much as possible um, and, and a bit of a bit of a bit of thought if you're limited for halyards. yeah example. yeah uh, it, it's it's but, definitely the way to do it and just just yeah, be it's definitely halyards and you need to, yeah you know. just be aware of where the um of what the boats can see what's um Gladriel going to be rigged up like is it going to be rigged up with these sort of halyards, or do you know? The moment Gladriel's got four halyards going across, and so we can set up with uh, the general recall on the inside, uh, then our uh, warning signal or Z flag, and then proprietary flag, and then there will be an end halyard left if need be. 
Well, and, and the orange is on a separate pole, is it? Or is it will be on a separate pole, um, which will be mounted in various places on the boat, depending on how you want to set the line. Yeah. And the blue flag will be on the same pole. Um, and for, so for the finish, you can just turn the pole over and have that as the finishing line. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in, in general, um, the the AP, the postponement flag, is is seen as the race officer's friend. So if anything, if anything goes wrong, you can always stick up the AP and start again. Um, if you, if you haven't started the race, if you have started the race, you can stick up the end flag and start again um, within certain, uh, yeah, but. The AP is there to to get you out of trouble if if needs be. So I, I mean, in general, I would want the AP on there and um, uh, the AP bent on and the general recall bent on and uh, have have the other two in the middle as long as, uh, and again as long as they're not uh, um, overlapping each other, you should be you should be all right. And Bill, just confirm there that the the AP can be pulled up, or uh, you know, raised. Right up to the last, yeah, up to the gun, basically, you know, yes. yeah, yeah, right up to the gun, yes, exactly. Um, if you, I mean, if you've got any timing issues or anything else, you can, you can stick it up, yeah. I mean, um, what I always think is the it's is the it's great balance with something like with evening racing with the victory class and and other evening racing is. Um, you want to make it as good as you can. You doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because people want to go out there, have a good race, and get back to the bar. So it's 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 always a difficult balance because you can can you make it absolutely perfect? Can you? No, but but it, but but it's 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 when is when is it good enough? It's it's always the, that balance to. To, to have because it's an, it's an the other thing I, I think the other thing to balance in there is also make sure it's fair so exactly, yes, if, exactly. it's, if something yeah. else is going on that it's making it unfair for one competitor yeah. or a group of competitors yeah. Yeah. then you've got to bring that into the balance as well though I know I think I think my tendency is to go um, <laughs> fast and um, um, fast and messy which 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 may not necessarily be the right thing but it's always to try and make it as good as possible bearing in mind people don't want to be hanging around all day so yeah however fundamentally the timing has to be right yes the timing has to be right yeah it, it's it's a things, even in other things you let go the timing has to be right yeah yeah exactly it's it, it is about being fair and um Timing is one of those things that, yes, has to be right. And and if it isn't right, you can stick up the AP and 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 go again and get it right next time. Uh, yeah, I mean that is the the rationale is that yes, the flag display tells you what's going to happen. The flag removed, is the order carried out, and the sound signal draws your attention to the visual signal. So, in theory even if not in practice, you should go on from when the flag is displayed or removed rather than the sound signal. But we all know people go on the sound signal. So it, that you've, but the absence of a sound signal does, is not a reason to, um, to postpone a sequence if the flag is displayed at the right time. And especially in these days, if you are also giving the timings by VHF, I, well, I think uh, yes, it's a, it's 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 an addition, an additional means of communication with people, which is what you're trying to do. You're trying to communicate to the fleet when it's going to start. So yeah, get your flags right attempt to make a sound signal even if it doesn't work and um, yeah. 
Right. Um, these are another couple of slides that come on this thing to do with the um, a sailing wind. So most of the time out there, you, there is plenty of tide, uh, especially plenty of tide compared to the speed of the boats. And often in the evenings, plenty of tide to do with the, um, compared to the amount of wind you've got. So um, if there's, yeah, if there's, if, if there's no wind, but there's tide, you do get tide induced wind. And the tide will, will tend to swing the sailing wind down tide. So if you have got a cross tide, then the wind will always be set down tide. So um, again, these are the these are the slides for the main thing, which is mostly uh, to do with setting either windward load courses with various options. Um, triangles or trapezoids, which you won't be doing. I mean, essentially, um, it'll either be around the cans course or probably a, um, a windward lured. Uh, probably not with a gate. Did you ever, uh, ever sail with a gate? No, I wouldn't think so. No. Uh, yes, we do sail occasionally with a gate. All right. Uh, gate or uh, start finish line as a gate or uh, both. Both. Right. Okay. Well, again, getting um, if 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 you're just the one committee boat and you're laying marks and doing everything, then. Um, you might be putting in a windward mark and a uh, and a pin end for the for the start finish, but I, again, it's um, depends on what you can do. But not right. normally, if there's a gate, it's a, a committee boat and lay mark, and then use existing marks at either end. Yeah. Yep. Um, on this sailing wind concept. Yep. Is there a, a, a suggestion here that the competitor on the water was oh, a different breeze direction than the committee boat would see in, in a cross tide situation? Yeah. I mean, yes, I mean, on, on, on the committee boat, you are just going to be getting the gradient wind. And it is then, um, if you have got a cross tide, then, then it does shift the sailing wind down tide. And it is something you have to be aware of on, on the committee boat. You can, um, you can do the calculations but I'm far more tempted to say it shifts it down tide. Um, certainly for the, certainly for the uh, sort of range of yeah, stuff so that we're talking about. On the, you should stand on the brow with your little wind indicator. So. Ron, can you mute? Because lots of interference. Thank you. I was muted. Somebody. You can stand on the bow with your little wind indicator, but you know, in, in simple terms, look and see which way the boats are going upwind as well. It's, it's probably yes. the simple message. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. I mean, it is always the angle that boats are are tacking through um, will give you a good idea of where the of, of where the sailing wind is. Um, also, if you're if you're on, on on the committee boat and the committee boat is lying in the same direction as the wind, then um, it's likely that there's either not very much tide or it's with the committee boat. And similarly, if, if the committee boat's lying across the wind, then you've got a good idea that there's enough tide there to, um, to shift the sailing wind. 
Um, that would uh, yeah, I mean, again, in setting up, yeah, around the cans course, it it tends to be the thing. I as far as setting a course um, around the cans or something, I tend to like to look for what I think is going to be the best beat, and then find the quickest way to get there, uh, and then find the quickest way to get back to it. <laughs> um, uh, you can also try and look for a good run. Um, runs are to a certain extent more uh, tide sensitive than, than beats, especially um, in, in a victory that tacks through such a big angle and runs pretty deep. Um, uh, so, and again, the, the, the patch of water that we're sailing in, um, there are so many tidal effects that will mean that people want to go one way or the other. It tends to make it uh, a bit trickier, the whole setting of courses for that. Um, the other thing as far as setting courses is as far as possible, you want to give people choices. Um, and to give people choices, you want to make the legs um, long and make each side as 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 fair as possible. And and that can be that can be difficult in in the patch of water where we are. There is generally um, one way or the other to go, and it tends to be how how good you are at getting there and and how good you are at staying in the in the in, in the positive. Um, a bit of water to keep going. Yeah, I suppose the other the other thing to bear in mind is the um, ability to shorten course, isn't it? Especially yeah. for us in in the evening racing. Yes, you also yes you you, you want to bring people back close to the harbour entrance um, to so that if and when you do have to shorten course, they have got uh, less far to go. That is generally one of the things. And it's always something I, I noticed with the, um, with competing in the Hamble Winter Series, when I used to do that a lot, uh, it, in a boat that came out of Portsmouth Harbour, you'd go all the way from Portsmouth Harbour to the middle of the Solent. You'd spend all the all morning sailing around the middle of the Solent, and then you'd finish just off the Hamble and you have to go all the way back to Portsmouth. So um, it, it, is an advantage if you can finish again close to where people want to go. Uh, right, let me try and. Well, they say top tips around the cans. Yeah, I mean, um, yes, in general, um, most of those are not. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not looping the marks and um, channel marks are not popular, especially at the moment with um, uh, QHM, I think, but uh, they may not be, it may not be as bad as for some of the bigger classes and uh, yeah, yeah, allow for the tide, um, definitely if you can. And this is the thing, yeah, with, um, So those are the rules of thumb as with the, uh, the book, yes. Um, but essentially, I just go set the, um, set the marks down tight a bit if you can. So each, each successive mark, either upwind or downwind, um, down tight a bit but you're probably not going to be able to do it. And um, so, what did I say? Yeah, five, five degrees per knot across tide is the standard one. Um, yeah, you can do that. You can do it as a triangle if you've got a cross tide. Uh, always with each leg going slightly downwind. Um, 
and ferris are there even if you can't compensate for it because you're on a fixed leg at least at least you need you can be aware of mm. what's there and and you can consider whether you actually want to do that leg because that's the effect you'll get on the water so it's, yeah. it's another sort of even if you can't move the marks it's another thing to to think about when you're picking that yeah. versus that one yeah yeah definitely and um again it, it is always just something to be aware of the, you've got limited resources a, a limited set of fixed marks um one maybe two marks that you can drop in so it is about making making best use of all the facilities that you have and this as they say is the the classic um oia manual to try and make a compromise course with a cross tide this can lead you into problems if you've got a um cross tide uh taking you upwind you can end up with a um a, a single tack to the top mark while having a squarish run and that is definitely not popular with the competitors uh having a one uh, having a one leg beat and a good run is um i think probably worse than having a um a skewed run and a and a decent beat but again you have to understand the compromises that are there right so this is the classic way that a start line would be laid from a um from a rib you would stream the mark from a, an anchor cable and drop it in uh, uh, running parallel to, to the committee boat and you and the mark layer would normally be asked to drop as the mark uh, reaches the right position and by the time the chains reach the bottom it, it, it ends up where the committee boat wants it um, if your mark's already there, as it, as it will be uh, most of the time, um, you've got to just take the committee boat past the position where you want to end up into, into whatever um, elements you've got, whatever elements is strongest, which is likely to be the tide, and then allow it to slip back on the anchor and make sure you've got enough range to allow yourself to pull the, pull the committee boat forward or or back a bit. You can do quite a lot of adjustment, especially on a shortish line, pulling the anchor chain in and out to move the committee boat backwards and forwards. Um, again, it won't be perfect. It is it is an, an imprecise art and it is something that gets better with practice. And unfortunately, um, in general, you're unlikely to have all that much practice, but um, Billy, it's quite difficult laying a, a, a short line, isn't it? Well, because we're, we're often laying very short lines compared with, um, you know, to, to perhaps the sort of 100 metre lines you lay at cows or you know, yeah. fleets. And... But you should, um, you should then be able to adjust it with the, with the anchor chain. You should be able to let a little, little bit more out. You, you let the boat settle, you let a little bit more out. What tends to be the problem is if you've got a slightly cross tide, you end up either drastically shortening or drastically lengthening the line at the same time. So it, it is, it's a, it's a, uh, as I, I think it's a, you've got a limited number um, uh, resources. You've got a limited amount of time. I think it's, I think it's a tricky thing um, and we do our best and uh, do what we can. Um, the classic, length of the start line is uh well well they say yeah generally around 1.3 1.4 um times the number of boats times the length of each boat um is is how long you want the start line whether you've got a range finder with you or not i doubt um otherwise you will be 
guessing it and you'll be just aiming to get it about right. Um, I think with a limited number of boats, you can possibly go a little bit longer, but you should have a reasonable feel of what a what a, um, a reasonable length of start line is. Um, the, the shorter the start line, the um, less any bias on the line has any effect, but also the more crowding you're likely to get. Um, yeah, I mean, again. Uh, so, if you have um, a cross current on the start line, then you move the down current side downwind a bit. So, that is how you would skew it for um, a, cross, a cross tide. Um, at the moment, the um, the RYA standard is to set a line at 90 degrees to the sailing wind, perpendicular to the sailing wind. It used to be that you would tend to want to put five or 10 degrees of port bias on to keep boats away from the committee boat and spread them out along the line. That tends not to be the case, um, especially at the sort of um, sort of open open meetings and things it tends to be the aim is to get the line square to um, although I would always be tempted to err on the side of sticking a little bit of port bias on moving the pin end up a little bit um, have it either square or with the pin end up a little bit and try not to have it with the committee boat uh, with with any bias on the committee boat but that would be a personal personal view i think it's probably better to err slightly on the side of having a bit of pin end bias but um that would be that would be my view i don't know what other people think about think about that i think that's a good idea saves a uh, committee boat crowding i'm gonna say you don't want them all on the committee boat bottom line no, no. I mean, I think um, uh, again, you uh, having 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 too much pin bias is a can be a problem. Having having any committee boat bias can be a problem. You want to aim for somewhere somewhere in between. Um, and again, if there's if there are any tactical reasons, you can skew it that way. I suspect. The lines that the victory class are using are are short enough not to make this a problem um, where people will want to get off the weak tide rather than uh, the stronger tide but it can do so I, you may want a little bit of bias the problem is you're probably only only going to be doing one start so you can't get the mood of the um, of the fleet uh, before you do your next one so I'd say um, Again, aim for either square or slightly pin in bias. Again, yeah, if you do, you're not gonna really gonna be saying, right. Yes, as I say, a race, a race team briefing. Yes, you will have a chat and work out who's doing what. You'll record all the votes on the, on, on the form, you will, monitor the wind direction and strength. Yep. Um, these are all uh, the things that you will be doing, even if there are only two of you, um, to make sure that the flags are, are um, hanged on, um, the sound signals are working, you're keeping an eye on, on the wind direction, and you are talking to um, the competitors. Um, it doesn't matter what so, what what sort of um, what sort of racing you're doing. You'll still be doing the same things. Um, you're doing the five, four, one, go. Um, warning signal up at five. Prep up at four. Um, one minute the prep down with a long signal and zero the start 
with one short signal. Um, yeah. And you need to be on time. Time for that. Billy, can I just chip in there? Yeah, dig in, please. One of the things that stresses the race officer, and I'm thinking me here, mm -hmm. out more than anything, is working to a time schedule. The time schedule you need to work to is your start sequence. Whether you start at bang on seven o'clock or five past seven is yep. far less critical. And what a race officer needs is time to get himself organized. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm, 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 I'm with you there. Yes. Yes. You, you cannot, you can't start before the scheduled time. Yeah. Um, uh, but starting after the scheduled time is fine. Yeah. Not before not before the time you've you've um you've you've told people you're going to start i'm in general um i'm bit, i'm used to working to the whole to the whole minute um and it uh and that is generally the way that the start the starting is done and as a competitor I've always found it easier to know that the if the if the if the as, as long as the committee is starting on a whole minute, even if I've missed the gun, I will still know exactly when it's going to be because I've got my um, I, either GPS or radio time, and it will always happen at exactly that time. So I've always found it easier to go on on. The whole minutes for that and found it more difficult when people go on odd odd times but yeah you don't I mean, you, have to, you have to start when you're ready but yeah. not before the advertised time and even bill on a nice tidy five minutes well i think that might waste a little bit too much time on yeah. on on these things um but it doesn't matter if you're at cows there, for example, you'll notice that they will they will fire certainly. Yeah, the and well the um, the black group black group go on the tens and white group go on the fives during during cows week. Or is it the other way around? I can't remember. But it's but but but, but you know that that um on during cows week if you you'll be you, you get set back ten minutes at a time if if there's a if there's a delay in the start sequence. So I I know I I'm, and but there are a few people who will go on the thirty seconds, but that is un, unusual as well. Um, yeah, as I say, time give it, it once you once you've started your sequence. You, you then do need to go to time, um, and and get that um, and get that separation right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think with the victory class, there's a there's a an, um, a simpler a simpler set of starting procedures. Um, and again, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it says warning signal at the advertised time, at or after the advertised time, not before. Uh, uh, here we go. We'll go big. Um, yeah, prep. Or is the P, one sound signal. Yeah. And then at the start, um, And at the start, you should, yeah, yes. Before the warning signal goes up, you will have you will have displayed the course. Preferably, um, significantly before the warning signal, uh, it gives you more time and it gives the competitors more time to work out what's going on. You can change it later, but it is as well to get it up there as soon as possible. 
and before the prep. Again, I, I, I doubt in, in, a, in victory starting, you will have set your start line before the warning signal. Um, you can adjust it up to the prep, but uh, it probably isn't being terribly competitor friendly to, to be moving it then. Um, and as with this, the P flag is what you're going to be using. Uh, you're not going to be using, nobody uses the I flag apart from windsurfers. Um, and since the Z flag is being used as the warning signal, you're certainly not going to be using a Z flag. Uh, black flag, I think there is one on board, but I doubt we'll be using it. And the U flag, which is now used in a lot of places, the soft black flag, again, um, not going to be on board. Yeah. So, yeah, no penalties if you're over in the minute. And black flags, you would be. Um, disqualified if you're over before the start. Um, yeah, this is something that I was, people try, have been teaching me that essentially you are, if you're, if you're calling the line, you are calling where the boats are on the line. Who's moving forwards? Who's moving backwards? This is especially if you, um, are recording the start, you want to paint a picture of what is going on, who's moving forward, who's, who's uh, close to the line, who isn't. So if you do have to go back and, um, heaven forfend, go into a protest, a protest room and discuss who you have um, excluded from being OCS, then it does help to be able to have a recording of this. I suspect this is not quite as necessary with victory class, but it is um, useful. Again, you probably haven't, we won't have the number of people to actually record boats moving forward, boats moving backwards. Numbers aren't there. Um, and you haven't got a pin end. And yeah, tapes. And it is the race officer's decision then when the line's clear, when it's an individual or when it's a general. And then after the start, you do then monitor the race and see how the boats are going, see, see whether they're going where you, think they were, where you think they're supposed to be going, which is always a, um, a handy thing, and how long they're taking, because you may well have to shorten, which is the only um, real tool within your box for doing it. How are we, how are we doing? Are we doing OK? Do you want um me to speed up or things going? It's good, Billy. I'm good. enjoying it. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, yeah, so, yep, you, re you record the, uh, the mark roundings uh, and yeah. It says watch for ca watch for casualties. I mean, I think you, you do then watch for people who are leaving, and not so much for commercial traffic where we are. Um, they will tend to keep out of way for that. And yeah, are they sailing the correct course? Which is always a good a good one. Um, yeah, um, that one. In general, as as race officer, wouldn't tend to protest competitors at all um, for rules of part two, unless they simply haven't followed the course, yeah. Yep, blue flag for finishing. Uh, yeah, essentially, if you're setting a finish line, at 90 degrees to the last to the last uh, leg of the course, um, so that there is as little chance for ambiguity as you can get from where they should be finishing. Again, you are unlikely to manage two finishing records. I don't think the numbers will. But um, yeah, 
in general, because you might be doing um, pursuit races or other things, they like uh, likes the the times. So uh, it is worth noting the times. Yeah. Um, that is again to do if you've got two simultaneous ones, don't copy what the other person's doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, misfiring of sound signals, I especially if you have got VHF as well, I'd be tempted not to. Um, mistiming, definitely. Uh, and if any boys, if, if you've noticed that um, a boy you've laid is drifting, then there's no point in carrying on. Um, yeah. Yeah. AP up and two sounds. Um, Pauses everything. And the only ones you're likely to have are AP and AP over A. But again, it's more likely to be N over A. Right. The individual recall. Um, and this is one of the things I would say. Um, there is a, a certain difference of opinion, especially if you've got a VHF, as to what you do with individual recalls. Without, with, without a VHF, with the way things are set up, you can only really stick up um, flag x-ray, make another um, a sound, all while doing that within the five seconds, um, and let people work it out for themselves. With the VHF, it leads to the options that you have. Either you just say individual recall, you give the numbers immediately, or you give the numbers after a period of time. And I'd be interested to know what people think about those various options. Chris, do you wanna chip in on that? I'd, I'd prefer to say um, X-ray is displayed, mm -hmm. but not to give both numbers. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I second that. I think I'd go slightly further and go X-ray is displayed. There were two boats over or something along those lines. Okay. But again, don't give numbers uh, just in case one of those two hears a number and the other didn't. Um, yeah. the, the difficulty with, with two boats over, as a for instance, is um, if there were three or four boats over um, because everybody is really tight on the line, but some are dipping back, you might not, you as the person on the radio might not be clear uh, as to who was actually over on the time. Indeed, I think it comes down to a, if you cannot clearly identify how many boats were over, add that information. Yeah, if yeah. you can't, then... Uh, leave it out, but you've got to be, be able to identify which boats were over uh, to be displaying an x-ray flag. Yeah, because yes, if you, if you, if you aren't sure, then um, it's, it's a general. general. Of, of course, but, but, but if, you've got, if you've got two or three boats over, if, if the person on the radio isn't mm. citing that line, yeah. then, then um, they are reliant on getting that information back to them. I mean, I know sort of one school of thought, which goes, they go immediately with the boats they've seen OCS, which I'm, I'm certainly not keen on that at all. Although it is, it's what, it's what they do in the fast forties. It's what doing other things. Um, and I'm not keen on the one where you wait, you, you, you look at your notes in 30 seconds, later you give the numbers i can see some benefit for that um there's the cow's week system you stick up flag x-ray it stays there for four minutes and then comes down it doesn't matter who's 
who's who's come back in the interim. Um, it, it's just it, it's a it's a it's 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 a thing. So it's a there are there there are different schools of thought on it. I know. But as as a as a friendly club race that we do, yeah. you know, if you've set off and you in X-ray's gone up, really? the one that's next to you's gone back. Mm. You think you're okay. You sailed all the way around the course, then to be yep. fine that you're OCS. Yep. On a on a nice evening's race, it's yep. just not on, really, isn't it? No, I know. I mean, I I I, I can see. I can see all sides to it, and I, if I was tempted to go for one, I would say. Thirty seconds after the start, you do the yeah. numbers. Um, yeah. Thirty seconds a minute after the start, you do the numbers. That, that but, seems a, that seems a fair way because, at least they've got half a chance. Either they pull out and they don't bother sending the whole race mm. because they're not they're not going to do anything. Yeah. Or you know, and they're not fighting their way around. They're also. Um, not in the way of competitors well, because that's happened before both yeah an ocs and then cause problems within the race yeah i mean i think i certainly think there has to be some some penalty for being ocs um that the idea of immediately reading a number no again I'll very often people can dip back and carry on um with the, with, reading the, with the reading the numbers under any circumstances is that the OCS is not a, frankly, it's not a reliable source of communication. The flag is. Yes. The, the, the VHF um, is not, at the end of the day, is, is prone to um, a, a variety of problems. Mm. But yeah. My unease with it is is probably still the, is, is on the fence of it, to be honest. Well, it, it, exactly. I mean, it is. Um, I don't think there's a clear answer. I don't think there's a. But I think it's something that it helps if there's a consistent policy on it. That that whatever is done is done consistently, and it is always difficult especially when um i know during cow's week one race officer was giving uh, recall numbers in the early part of the week and then he wasn't there for the second part of the week and they got the standard cow's procedure for the second part of the week and the competitors weren't happy um those that were ocs those that weren't which i think were probably perfectly happy uh but it it is something that I think is worth um, having a having a a discussion about what you want to do. Now I can see that being a sort of um, being competitor friendly um, can lead to unfairnesses, which is where you've got to strike the balance. No, it's just a just some thoughts on that. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, the, the thing is, if there are only two boats behind the line and everyone else is over, you can identify the boats that are over. So it's a, it's an individual recall. However unpopular and non-competitive friendly that may make you. Uh, and it's been done before. I know, absolutely. <laughs> it's been I've done, done it. Before. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, uh, flag acts. Uh, Call the OCS, watch boats return. They've displayed for four minutes if they don't. So, yeah, no sound signal. And again, with a with an individual recall, I would always um, make sure you record the boat's time uh, as and when they come through the finish line. Uh, their time and position and record them as OCS then um, make sure that you have a record of the finishing time just in case just although I doubt that that's a going to be a problem and um, you can have a little bit more time before signaling a general recall but again you want to be pretty rapid and um, I know people say you shouldn't change your mind from individual to general 
I'm not really of that opinion as long as you get the um, general recall up pretty rapidly because you don't want people to sailing off. Um, and again, it is two additional sound signals when you have a general recall. And then if you do need to abandon racing, uh, three sound signals and an N. Um, uh, again, I don't think there's anything in the sailing instructions that gives the race officer a great deal of latitude on abandoning. If boats are likely to finish within the time limit, you've got to let them finish. Um, but you sh should probably be shortening uh, before then. However, if there, is, if there isn't much chance of boats finishing with the, within the time limit, then you certainly can abandon. Um, yeah, multiple times. Can I just butt in here a moment, Billy? Um, of course. Up, after a general recall, you've had a general yep. recall, can the procedure before going into the net into the sequence again? Yep. Can you go straight from a general recall into the sequence or do you have to put the AP up? Nope. Um, the general recall flag works like an AP. So one minute after the general recall flag goes up, the prep can sorry, one minute after the general recall flag comes down, the prep goes up. So right. it, warning signal. The warning signal goes up. Go up. Sorry. The warning signal, you're right. You're you're right, the warning signal. Yeah. Yeah, one minute after yeah. That's and so we make a sound that, signal for the general recall to come down. Go on, it's one, I think. Yes, one sound signal for it coming I down. I always have to I always have to look in uh, if you have the uh, the 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 um, the current racing rules, it's inside the back um, page are all the flag signals and yeah, it's um, one one signal to come one sound signal to come down and one minute after that um, a warning signal is made. Yeah. That got me into trouble in the past when it when um, you used to be able to go into a there was a few cycles of rule to go when people were still going ten five one and it would be one minute after that you could make a prep and go into a five minute prep and that got me that. I had some problems with that. Yep. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that it's it's the yeah when the general comes down, you have to make the warning signal one minute afterwards. Yeah. And if you miss that timing, then go into your AP and, and start it all again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. people are yeah. looking for that coming down and treat that as their six minutes. Yes. I mean, so yeah, once once first up, once the general recall is up. You leave it up until you're ready. You're you're ready to go into sequence, really. So it's down, one minute, warning up, one minute prep up. Yeah. Um, shortened course is flag um, S, and it's in the rules as being between flag S um, two S up with two sound signals if. Um, if the competitors can hear it, but uh, and it, it's in the S eyes that it will be a finish between the blue f or the blue flag will also be displayed, and I imagine it will be between the blue flag and the mark, um, unless you're finishing on the um, on the standard victory start finish line when you will display flag S and no blue flag and you'll just be monitoring the finish line. Uh, course changes, you won't be changing courses. I doubt you'll, I doubt there's a flag M available. So you're unlikely to be doing mark missing, which is <laughs> displaying flag M, making multiple sound signals um, if you see it, um, it is not somebody uh, being Scottish. It is um, that the mark is missing. And although, um, watch out for Scottish coaches who can confuse things if they are on a course in their rib flying a saltire. It is not 
not recommended. Uh, yeah, after AP, uh, one flow start, yeah. Yeah, we've done all that. Um, yeah, um, protests, if you've got them, um, just <laughs> yeah, leave it to the jury. It's their problem. They've, they're the ones with the hard problem there. Uh, so, And the debrief, the most important part of the day is, um, is go to the bar and have a beer with the competitors and listen to what they have to say and um, take it on the chin is what I would say and that is probably the main um, the main thing uh, that we're all doing this uh, for our personal enjoyment and um, go and speak to the competitors and uh, it will well and I think that is probably about all I've got to say on this. Um, so if anyone wants to um, talk about anything else, are we good? Thanks, Billy. That's been really good, actually. I, well, I think I, I think um, I, so. I think definitely we the um, competitors have the um, easiest part of the day, don't they? I think it's well, a lot harder on the committee boat than it is on the. I think I think it is a, it is a tough um, it's a tough thing to do because mm -hmm. you have got restricted um, resources. You um, haven't got a great number of boys to, to lay. You've got one boat, and if you do want to lay a mark, you've got to lay it, and then you've got to go and be a, a line. And it is, um, and then there are time constraints, and there are possibly dropping winds big tides, slow boats, it's, you do have certain advantages. You do generally have a small fleet and one class. Um, and you do, the people know each other and, and that helps, but it is it is quite a, um, a tricky balancing out and you won't get it exactly right, but wanna get it as good as you can get it so that people can go and enjoy their racing. Can I just ask a question about committee boat? Um, it's yep. it always shown as a committee boat at the starboard end yep. of, of mm. the line. Um, is it any reason for that, or can it go the other end, it, in the port end, and have the pin at the starboard end? It can go the other end. There's nothing stopping you. Um, it's just that uh, as boats. In general, you're starting to windward, and in general, um, boats will want to be on starboard tack, and uh, you would rather they were hitting the pin than the committee boats um, <laughs> yeah. piling up down at that end. That's the only that I think is the only um, reason for it. Also, if they're on starboard, then uh, is it easier to see the cell numbers? I don't know. Um, probably not. No. But um, it's. No, I'm just thinking of some up harbour no, star three. You don't. You don't have to. No. No, yeah. definitely not. Definitely not. Say you want to use PSC, which is mm. quite sure uh, as one end of the line. It sometimes might be better to have the committee boat on the outside. Yeah, I mean, um, let's see. I have to remember which. Yeah. Um, no, you can. You can. It, it's 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 not set in stone. No. Good. The thing you might want to do there is actually put a bit more starboard end bias on the line. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't set for the best start line, but it then does protect the committee boat a little more by just shifting mm -hmm. that line uh, to try and push people towards the far end. Although yep. then does sort of give you an, a not as good start line. Mm hmm. And you can always hang things off the committee boat. Anything that is in, in intentionally there becomes part of the committee boat. So any... Um... We have got some nice big fenders now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're all, they're all um, then part of the committee boat. And uh, yeah. Mm. Can I just ask a question that I should probably know the answer to is, um, 
What are the restrictions on off Portsmouth where we can um, anchor a committee boat? I mean, obviously, we're not allowed to anchor in the shipping channels, but presumably not in the swashway. Or and I think there's another restriction somewhere um, north of um, of our starting line, isn't there? You can buy yourself a chart. I should do, shouldn't I? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a there's a no anchoring zone runs from it starts a point sort of halfway between. Um, uh, uh, Suffolk Sales and Portsmouth Sailing Club and sort of runs mm. due south east and sort of almost all the way out to the forts um, mm. there's it's yeah. quite a large area um, I know that there was definitely charts on uh, um, Rosina where it was marked on yeah but yes there's an area the other thing is the Coast Watch um, who, who do, a, do a good job watching the um, uh, do a good job watching the uh, harbour entrance have noticed boats anchoring there and then reported it to uh, various people so it does usually end up finding its way back to you where you can and cannot anchor will be covered in the Greladriel induction course and on the gps on uh Gledrill, uh, it does is clearly shown where you can and cannot anchor that line going from hasler out to the fort right thanks jim Yeah. You can't lay void in that space either. I believe. Yeah, correct, probably. Um, you'd probably get away with it. If you had a buoy on a weight rather than an anchor, you'd probably get away with it. But yes, technically you can't. You can argue the semantics with Betty. Yeah. Exactly. And so don't lay the wall. She'll win. <laughs> QHM is generally very supportive if you talk to him or her. <laughs> right. We got any other questions for Billy? Or, or general yes. points on race? Yes, I've got one. John, John Hartley here. Um, it, it's basically about the use of the VHF radio by the race officer during the start sequence and also during the race. We do tend to use it and to signal uh, timings for the start. Um, we've just discussed the uh, instance of um, an individual recall and I think we've made that clear. But um, what are the pros and cons of using it for a change of course and things like that? Is it generally accepted or should we just rely on signals? It's really whatever's in the SIs. And I don't know that anything is in the SIs about changing, changing courses. Is anything in the SIs about changing courses? I thought there was something. All oh, right, OK. Okay. I'll read it um, up. So to add, my two, it add to my two pence worth, I think it's useful. My personal opinion is that it's a useful tool to communicate with sailors your intentions and give them an idea of what's going on. However, those flags and sound signals need to be done properly first. If you do those and then add other information on the VHF, brilliant. But if you don't get the flags and sound signals correct, then that's where you can open up the possibility of people protesting you highly unlikely but um it, yeah it just it means it's reduced i agree i agree yeah the sailing instructions allow for a change of course via, via vhf because they're obviously written from running it from the wall where you can't get a message any other way out to the competitors when they're out by leads or somewhere like that so yeah. yes, it's written in the same instructions that you can do that. Um, I think I think changing changing course by VHF is one of those that is more prone to problems than other things, um, especially if it isn't done on a on a regular basis by both by both sides, by both the race officers and the competitors. Unless you're used to it happening. 
Um, if it comes as a surprise, then it is it has more uh, ability to go wrong. You can uh, be used uh, marine VHF in the wall unless you've got a shore station station license. Yep. Technically. Yep. So um, standing there with your handheld, actually on your standard ship license is not legal in terms of the VHF yeah. licensing. You need a washing up bowl you can stand in. <laughs> <laughs> Full of water. And a surfboard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, it is a... In, in other words, you need to be cautious doing it. And particularly bearing in mind that we sometimes work locally on things like Channel 15, which the dockyard and the tug shoes are working. Yeah. So you may be heard by people who actually may take an interest, particularly if you start annoying them. So it does require perhaps a little bit of caution. Mm. Anything else from anyone? Is that... No, just thank you. Greased in silence. <laughs> well, I hope it was. Well, Billy, well, thank you very much. Billy, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been really good. Well, yeah, well, as I say, I hope it was useful. I'm not. We'll all be looking forward to getting out on Galadriel in the um, well, yeah. very shortly. Yeah. Thanks, Billy. Right. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the water. Yep. Cheers, Billy.